Scott Galloway, professor of marketing, serial entrepreneur, and author of The Four, The Hidden DNA of Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google. The basis of the book, or the crux of the book, is trying to connect evolutionary anthropology to these very powerful companies and understand how them tapping into basic instincts has resulted in some of the most powerful entities in the history of business. So in order, I believe Google is our god since we emerged from caves. We've always needed a super being. Our brain is our competitive advantage as a species. It's big enough to ask very complex questions, but not big enough to answer them. So as a result, we have this void where 3,500 super beings are all competing to be our one source of truth. And I believe that if you pray, it's essentially just a query to a higher being, hoping there's some sort of divine intervention that spits back a response that you trust more than any answer from a priest, rabbi, scholar, mentor, or boss. And I believe our modern day God is Google. And if you think about your name and your face above everything you've typed into the Google query box, you'll soon acknowledge that Google knows you better than anyone in the world. Who you present to your therapist, your wife, your mother, is the representative of you, not the real you. But Google knows if you're about to get engaged, it knows if you're about to get divorced, it knows what diseases you have, what diseases you were you may have exposed yourself to. So I believe Google is our God. Moving further down the torso, one of the wonderful things about our species is we not only need to love others, or excuse me, we not only need to be loved, kids with poor nutrition and good affection have better outcomes than kids with good nutrition and poor affection, we need to love others. The strongest signal or indicator of you making it to 100 years of age is simply put, how many people do you love? The physical and mental nuance involved in caregiving releases a hormone that clears out the bad cholesterol. So the need to love others is actually instinctual, and I believe that Facebook foots to that need, mostly through images that create greater empathy and catalyze and reinforce first and second degree relationships. Moving further down the torso, Amazon is our consumptive gut. Again, since we emerged from caves, we've been taught that more is better. The best business strategy is more for less. The country that offers more for less, better than any other nation, is usually the fastest growing economy, and right now that's China. And the company that offers more for less, better than any other company, is typically the most valuable company in the world. And today, that is Amazon, and Amazon will soon be the most valuable company in the world. The, f the penalty for too little is starvation. The penalty for too much is lethargy, gluttony, and diabetes, but it has a 20-year lag. So open your cupboards, open your closets. You have 10 to 100x more than you need. But that, that rational realization that I have enough is immediately washed over by the instinct of, yeah, but I'd like more. And Amazon foots to that, offering you at least a perception of more for less. Moving further down the torso, our final instinct, most powerful instinct is survival. But almost everybody watching this video got up this morning and felt like they had that box checked. Distinct of the headline news and what you read on the front page of the New York Times, the likelihood you'll die at the hands of another human being are lower today than they've ever been, which takes us to the second most powerful instinct, which is procreation. And we will do a lot to feel more attractive to others, even if we're in a monogamous relationship, that need to feel attractive never really goes away. So as a result, we'll buy things and pay irrational margins for things that signal our worthiness of a mate. The best signal of your worthiness or the quality of your genes right now is this device. And you'll pay $1,200 for a $268 set of components, chipsets, and sensors to essentially signal to the world that you're part of the innovation class, you live in a city, you make a good living, you would make a good mate. So this irrational appeal to our heart and to our reproductive organs has resulted in what is the most valuable company in the world that will produce more profits this quarter than Amazon has produced in its lifetime as a public company. That's the basis of the four, trying to connect evolutionary anthropology to business strategy, and then to suss out the underpinnings of these four companies so you can apply them to a small business, your own investment strategy, your own professional strategy. My revised vision, version coming out this summer, the paperback will also include a chapter, whereas I believe after studying these companies for 24 months, that they've become too powerful. It's not that they're evil. It's just that we do have um, a system, a capitalist system, where power can corrupt. We now, in the example of Facebook, have a 33-year-old that oversees a population or a community more vast than Christianity, more vast than the entire population of the Southern Hemisphere, if you include India, and can't be removed from office and will likely be with us for 70 years. And I think history is littered with terrible periods that started or were caused by individuals who may have been good people, but had no checks and balances on their power. And I believe that is happening with big tech right now, and that we have an obligation to recognize we're at a part in the economic cycle, a natural part, where it's time to break these companies up and oxygenate 
the marketplace.